welcoming light our gatherings with your love searching for justice and peace light our way amen, amen. pursuant to section 3a of house resolution 493 the journal of the last day's proceedings is approved the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Van Hollen. Mr. Speaker, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to Section 3B of House Resolution 493, the House stands adjourned until 10 a.m. on Friday, Mr. Speaker, December 23, Mr. Speaker, 2011. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I would like to uh, ask for unanimous consent that we bring up the bill to extend the tax cut for 160 million Americans. As you walk off the floor, Mr. Speaker, you're walking out, you're walking away, just as so many Republicans have walked away from middle-class taxpayers, the unemployed, and very frankly as well from those uh, who will be seeking medical assistance from their doctors, 48 million senior citizens. We regret, Mr. Speaker, that you have walked off the platform without addressing the issue of critical importance to this country, and that is the uh, continuation of the middle class tax cut, the continuation of unemployment benefits for those at risk of losing them, and the continuation of the access to doctors for all those 48 million seniors who rely on them daily for their health. And I am pleased to yield to my friend, Mr. Van Hollen. Well, thank you. Well, the House here wrapping up a uh, pro forma session. House Minority Whip Steny Hoyer calling for a unanimous content, uh, consent for the House Republicans to agree to the Senate's tax cut measure. The uh, chair of the uh, House uh, walking out during that time. Members yesterday voted down the Senate's version. If the House and Senate don't come to agreement on the payroll tax legislation, 160 million will see a 2% tax increase. House Speaker Boehner also named conferees to negotiate the tax cut bill with the Senate should Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid decide to call the Senate back from their holiday break for more work on the measure, something he reconfirmed yesterday that he will not do. In the meantime, most congressional lawmakers have left Washington for the winter holiday, and the White House will not say whether President Obama will join his family in Hawaii for the holidays. We're live now for the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace here in Washington. They're holding a discussion on the global economic outlook, and we'll hear from several economists about the U.S. economic recovery, the European debt crisis, and China's economy. This is just getting underway. Yukon Huang, who is a senior associate in the Asia program at the Carnegie Endowment, and was for many years uh, the uh, country director in Beijing. Uh, for the World Bank. Um, he was also country director for Russia, another very important uh, uh, World Bank client. And then to my left, yet another World Bank veteran, uh, Peter Bottilier, who is a professor at uh, SAIS and, as associ and an associate of the Carnegie Endowment and also uh, ran uh, the uh, Beijing office of the World Bank uh, a while ago. Uh, let me kick this session off with uh, some brief remarks uh, on the 2011 record, and particularly on the crisis of the Eurozone, which is so central to the outlook. 2011 was a disappointment because of the slowing from the fast pace of 2010 and because it leaves the advanced countries uh, well below the pre-Great Recession trend. But 2011 was not a disaster either. Uh, growth in the world was in line with the 10-year pre-crisis average, largely because emerging markets continued to power ahead, though they slowed uh, around mid-year. Moreover, Although the U.S. economy grew at half the rate uh, of 2010 in 2011, it has recovered, regathered 